What's going on guys? Still here from Demsec and I'm being joined once again by Aaron. Hi guys. Hi guys. Yeah. I'm not gonna that was that was not that high pitched, there was no <laughs> You're right. you're always horrible to me. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's been a while and I guess we're really sorry for this because yeah. we did promise more videos more regularly. But we have a plan. I'm sure we said this last time, but we do have a plan <laughs> and we've got things in the pipeline. Um, so yeah, let's get on to this episode. In the previous video we posted, um, we mentioned whether you guys would be interested in man in the middle attacks and how to perform them, how they work, all that kind of cool stuff. And we actually got an overwhelming amount of people actually asking for that. So today we're going to go through a few different types of uh, man in the middle attack. So, without further ado, we're going to hand over to Aaron, who's going to show you uh, probably the most common and most, like, publicised, I guess. Publicised? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Right yeah. word. <laughs> yeah. Um, Arp spoofing. So, let's hand over to him. Thank you. Right, uh, so we're going to put up an image uh, so you can kind of see how um, Arp works. Uh, so, essentially, you have a host um, which will send a broadcast to the network asking for a physical address of a host with a specified IP address. Then the host with the corresponding IP replies with its MAC address. Then the attacker can reply with the MAC address in order to have the traffic destined for a victim to be re redirected to the attacker. So I'm going to show you a demo of it. Um, I hope that makes sense. It will probably make sense with the uh, image. Uh, so, right, so with this command, um, the echo one and the IP forward uh, config file, what, what we're essentially doing there is we're putting uh, a binary value into that config to make it work. So the IP forward allows a Linux host to forward the traffic on behalf of its clients on the network, to, uh, which basically makes it a router. So if we press enter, because I've already written out. Um, that's done that already. And then we uh, go ahead and do the uh, up spoof. So up spoof. I uh, go, ahead, go ahead and mention that command, um, the IP forward. That is pretty critical to this. If you forget that, you're gonna have some really <laughs> interesting issues, which I've <laughs> before. So uh, obviously we, we test these things before we do them and I forgot to do the, the that uh, command and I think it was sitting, I was sitting here for about an hour trying to figure out why it wouldn't work and the uh, Windows machine was just not really doing much it would, just wouldn't load anything it wouldn't I couldn't ping anything it just wouldn't do anything it was great it was so I great guess, I guess on another note um, if your like motive is to just knock one client offline yeah do this <laughs> yeah, um, yeah obviously not advocating that but no not at all we wouldn't be doing that at all <laughs> That'd be naughty. We're only doing things for educational purposes. <laughs> yeah, just a quick disclaimer right there. All, <laughs> education plus, all educational purposes only. Don't take our sarcasm as a... No, we wasn't being sarcastic. What sarcasm? <laughs> um, right, so we've... Obviously, we've got the fate of having the IP address so willingly there for us. So we need the uh, IP address of the machine and then we need the default gateway as well so uh, i'm just going to move this aside so i can actually read it and type because i have can't a terrible... remember an ip address i can never remember an ip address um so i do believe it is tac t um with 192.168.1.69 and then the default gateway which is 192.168.1.25 Four. I'd check that second IP, you put another dot in. Ah, damn. I'm just saving you some pain later. Yeah, thank you. Right, so we'll get that one right. And then we go over here and uh, do the same. Uh, so, we're well, not the same. Spoof, tac T, uh, 192.168.1.254. So we're doing the default gateway first. Uh, and then 192, why do I always do that? 192.168.1.69, run that. So 
then what we can do is if we go into Wireshark. So and... he's run it twice there with the IPs of the default gateway and the host in like separate positions because each one is only like spoofing each way. So when the default gateway is first, it's only like sniffing, well, spoofing traffic from the router to the client and not vice versa. So anything coming from the router to the client you may be able to get, but if the client's, for example, posting a username or password to a website, if you're only um, spoofing one way, you won't see that. So that's why he's got two running. Thank you. Um, right, so back to Wireshark. We start the interface on uh, ETH0. Um, and we've got all of this pretty stuff. Uh, so if I type HTTP and just apply that for a second, obviously nothing's going to show because there's nothing going on in here. Get rid of this. Make this bigger. Uh, let's go on to Internet Explorer. Uh, so let's hope this has worked because that worked very quickly. Oh, look at that. It has. Uh, so if we look for a post... There should hopefully be something here. Uh, la, 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 la. Uh, there we go. Although that's not the right. Why is that right? Well, it is right because that's that's um, pulling. If you scroll up a bit, it'll show you um, scroll right to the top. So at the top here, it's posting to c.gif. So this it's pulling some kind of gif file. And um, you won't be seeing a post because you haven't actually posted any data to the site as of yet. But just being able to see any traffic in Wireshark, obviously he browsed to that website on a different machine. He isn't browsing to it on his local machine, so it is definitely working. Yeah. So that's an ARP spoof. Um, I guess we should talk about some of the issues with ARP spoofing. Um, one of which is it is incredibly slow. You won't really notice that on Aaron's machine because it's on a virtual network, so there isn't like... It's not having to go particularly far, but on like a large network, if you try doing this, it just slows the internet down so much because obviously it's adding an extra hop into like any transmission, and also it's kind of it's kind of having to fight against the legitimate ARP all the time. So it's basically going like the client's going right, this is my MAC address, and it's like going no, this is my MAC address, and vice versa. It's kind of a Adding loads of stuff into it, which wouldn't necessarily originally be in there. Yeah, and it is ridiculously slow, so this is not really something you'd commonly go for. So I guess what we're going to move on to is a... Um, DHCP. DHCP spoofing. So, the way this kind of works is uh, DHCP is when your host comes online, when you open your laptop, turn it on, and it connects to the Wi-Fi... It's going to basically broadcast out to the network, basically going, who's got an IP for me? And along with that information, you can actually specify like a gateway. So you can obviously see there where an attacker could take advantage of that. When the client comes on, an attacker could reply saying, this is your IP and I'm your gateway. And straight away, you've got a man in the middle attack. All their traffic is going to be routed through you. So I'm going to use... Etikat for this. It's got a quite a nice graphical user interface. I don't know why I said it like that. I just said GUI. Just GUI. Said GUI. Um, so it's Etikat dash capital G, which will load up the graphical interface. And uh, start unified sniffing on your um, interface. If you're using Wi Fi, obviously you select your wireless interface there. And obviously, up uh, Etikap, Etikap even, um, has a load of different man in the middle attacks built right in you can even do the art poising here but we wanted to show it like on the command line and that kind of cool stuff um so i'm going to go for a dhcp spoofing attack so it's going to want to know the ip address pool and i mean if you've already got an ip on the network it's best to use one well you don't have to but i'd recommend using one that's like in there but on the upper range not necessarily um it's not something you necessarily have to do but i like to so I'm going to do 192.168.0.100 to 192.168.0.200 and then netmask of 255.255.255.0 uh, and the netmask may change but that's um, that's sub, uh, sub netmasking and that's not something 
that I like to teach because it's pretty dry. No offense to anyone who loves networking for whatever strange reason. <laughs> so what we're going to do is emulate this machine coming like online on the network. So I'm going to go ahead and reboot it. I mean, periodically, a, a um, host will just ask for a new IP because they are given on like leases of amounts of time. So this is kind of something that you leave and set. As you can see over here in Etscap, um, I've actually gone ahead and replied to this host, which means it should have an IP address in my range. So I'm going to go ahead and log in to this machine. I am using a Linux machine here, but it works exactly the same on any Windows host and Mac for it's just anything really. Um, I've opened the wrong thing. I don't want a browser. I want Wireshark. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, load up Wireshark. Uh, I'm going to start listening on ETH0. To filter out HTTP because we don't really care about anything else for this example. And on my target machine, he's going to go for a browse on the internet. And we're just going to go to msn.com. Why not? So the site's going to load, and as you can see here, we're getting a boatload of stuff coming through. Uh, yep, yeah, you can see lots of lots of traffic coming through from this host here. And if we ha if this site had like plain text login, which it doesn't, obviously all these things rely on plain text logins. Um, you'd be able to see this password as he posted it, and that's a DHCP. It's literally that simple. It's basically it's still kind of a bit of a race because you have to get like your IP given to them before, um, like the normal one, which is kind of iffy it's one of those things where either they'll get to it quicker or you'll get to it quicker and it's I've, I would say 50 50 but it's nowhere near that it can be completely hit and miss but this is extremely more um, extremely faster than an art spoof because it's basically taking advantage of how things actually work it's literally saying I am the router so you're so it isn't having to like necessarily um, lie to the router and say, right, any traffic going to that sent to me. Your computer legitimately thinks the attacker is the router, and as far as you're concerned, you're getting to the internet and there's no problem. So uh, that's it for DHCP spoofing. Let's go back over to Aaron, who should have ICMP. We should. Now you've dissed my version of or my uh, way of doing things and saying oh, spoofing's terrible. That's um, up, up. <laughs> What did I say? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, because it is. <laughs> Fair play. Uh, right, so ICMP redirect um, is another man in the middle uh, attack. Uh, it's only supposed to be used by the router in order to inform other routers that they have a shorter route to a specified host. Uh, but you can be used uh, by an attacker to have all of the traffic from a specified host redirected to them. Uh, so we're going to use etcap again. So like Dale said, use etcap uh, dash capital G. Don't use little g because uh, Caddy will go, nope. Um, right, so if we go to... Um, uh, la, 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 unspecified... What was that? Un unspecified sniffing. And then the network interface. Unified uh, sniffing, mate. Unified. I, I, you know I don't read things. <laughs> you know I just click and read, and, and, and whatever happens, happens. Um, so, yeah, once you've done that, uh, you go to hosts, uh, host list, which will show you the host list, which looks very short to me, so I've probably forgot to do something. Why is that not working? Uh, that's just something that sometimes happens if you've rerun it a few times. I think it bases it off. Uh, don't just do um do scan for hosts. Go to hosts. Scan for hosts. Ah, there we go. That's that's better. Should be. No? There yeah, you there. go. There we go. Right. Um. So we already know uh that the IP address is sixty nine. That 
what that is unintentional no you totally said that on purpose that is unintentional that is you very said that on purpose it's immature it's immature now <laughs> um right so we um <laughs> add that to uh target one uh so it's a bit like the uh arp spoofing when we did the first target say and then the second target in the command line and then obviously that was the default gateway as well so we add that to the second target or target two um and then after we've done that uh we go to this one uh man in the middle or mitten as uh me and dale keep calling it uh and then mitten uh, mitten mitten and then uh icmp redirect uh click that and this is really annoying and i got really annoyed with this because why won't it let me move it? Why? Why? Um, so if I just quickly, because like we've already established, I cannot remember things. Uh, if we just type five four dash six four uh, d nine zero five eight six d four. And then the IP address for of this is of the uh, gateway the uh, default gateway. So if we do that, uh, that should work. So if we go over to the Windows machine, wherever it may be, wherever it is, where is it? Here we go. Uh, if we should be able to just refresh this, and then if we no activate Windows, what what why? Get off. Get off. <laughs> Don't forget to re uh, activate Windows, guys. Um, right. You need to run Wireshark. Would have helped if I started sniffing, actually. Yeah, that probably would have helped. <laughs> that probably would have helped. So let's go over to my unactivated Windows, which is probably broken. No, no if you just... um, go to... Oh, it's God. fine. I'll, I'll just do this. I'll just do this. Oh, God. There we go. Right. So let's see if it's worked this time, because I had a little bit of trouble last time. Uh, what are you doing? Yeah, so if we go to Wireshark. Stop giving me errors. And, oh, God, all right, calm down. All right, and then HTTP. All right. I don't know if that's... Pretty fresh. Uh, not that one. Uh, that one. There we go. There we go. Same as last time. Uh, you can see there's traffic going through it, so you know it's working, and then you can... That is all the proof you need. Yes. You can do... Whatever you like from here. So this is, I'd say, faster than ARP spoof, but not as fast as DHCP in terms of actual, like, the client accessing the internet. Like, if they went and did, for example, a speed test, um, they'd probably get, like, faster speeds than they would through an ARP spoof, but it's still quite slow because it's only half duplex, which basically means um, while one's talking that one is listening instead of like being able to both talk and listen at the same time um aaron's gonna do a speed test now apparently and show his ip on uh, that's all right be my guest guys i don't mind you're gonna go reset the route in a minute anyway <laughs> oh yeah so there you go guys if you ever feel like <laughs> it, it stopped just, working that just says don't use internet explorer yeah well i don't have anything else installed so, so... well there you go it breaks the internet yeah but that's that's just an, an explorer. That is just an explorer. Yeah, it's broken again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that. No. Let's try it. Go on, Dad. Carry on. I'm, I'm trying to introduce WPAD, mate. Now, okay, so doing I'll, a speed test. I like doing speed tests. You know, see, it doesn't really affect it that badly. But yeah. Me. Me. Okay. So the final type we're going to show is my personal favourite. Uh, it's WPAD proxies. So I guess I'm going to load up this link here. Um, WPAD stands for the Web Proxy Auto Discovery Protocol. Um, on by default in Windows, may I add. Uh, I just made Aaron 
disable it because no, no, just don't have it on. Um, I didn't realise it was on, so... Yeah, it's, it's on by default in Windows and in Internet Explorer and even... I think Firefox, it says use the system proxy settings by default, which is to use WPAD. So the way WPAD works is, you can imagine it being really useful on a corporate network, but the idea is um, it allows a host to basically send a broadcast out saying, who has a proxy for me to use? And when you're on a like large corporate network or a school network or anything like that, it's what could be used to do web filtering and basically a lot of times on networks like that, the only way to get out to the internet is through the proxy. So it just allow so there's, they have a server running which basically says, "Yep, here's your proxy settings," and you go through the proxy. Um, we can take advantage of that by uh, even on networks that don't have proxies already, um, because this setting is usually on. We can basically reply with our proxy and basically say, "Go through this," and your host will, your computer will happily oblige. So. For this, um, I'm going to go ahead and use Responder. There's a link in the description for the Git for Responder. That's the tool we're going to be using. Uh, yep, this is the legit one and not my customized one. I just need to make sure because mine's a little bit dodgy. Not like... Never mind. <laughs> so, this is the command we're going to be using. Python responder.py dash dash wpad. And I'm going to use an upstream proxy. Um, basically, WPAD allows you to run it through proxy, but um, Responder itself only has predefined like um, things it's looking for. Whereas if I run it through my own proxy as well, I can just capture everything instead of just the stuff Responder wants. I mean, you could go ahead and program, uh, not program, but change Responder because it's just Python to capture everything. But I like using a proxy that's designed for it. So I've also installed Privoxy, um, that's just apt to get installed Privoxy, and by default, uh, let's make sure it's actually running. So that's going to start Privoxy, and it started. Um, Privoxy is actually a really cool project, it's not meant to be used like this at all, but it, um, it's a web proxy that allows you to basically disable ads, disable anything that may be tracking you, all through like a convenient proxy, so without changing anything on your host or even on certain hosts that may not allow you to block certain types of things like that. You can just run it through the proxy and that does everything for you. Um, so this should be running on port 8118, but I need to get my IP address. So I'm going to be going for uh, 192.168.014 um, colon 8118, I think I said it was. We can quickly check that actually. Um, net start dash dash listen um, yep oh, no let's grep out priv oh forgot to type grep so okay that's not very useful to me um if we nano the um, privoxy config file which is a uh, etsy privoxy config and then we look for, that's control W by the way, to search in nano for port. And scroll down a bit. If you just do control W and then enter it, it'll automatically um, do this. So default uh, effective unset bind to this address, port 818, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave that be because that should work. Actually, we'll go ahead and do this and then we start Privoxy. Hopefully we get no terrifying errors. Let's just make sure it is actually running. Status. And it's running. Um, that should be on part 818. And then what we're going to do is specify an interface in Responder for this to work. So we have this upstream proxy set here. Uh, we're listening for events. And what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to have to re reboot this Debian machine again because it's still trying to use our previous um, our DHCP spoofing um, attack. And obviously that doesn't exist anymore, so I'm just going to reboot it. So it's kind of like a fresh um, machine again, kind of.
So we're booting up now. When we open up a browser, this should start trying to. WPAD is on. So I'm going to have some really interesting situations here. <laughs> so let's try and go to Google. So you can see this is kind of flaky as well. Um, although I personally think it's great. In fact, should we just use my host? That, what could possibly go wrong? What could possibly go wrong? So this is the browser for my actual host PC. What I'm going to do is enable WPAD. So um, by default, I don't have it set. But as you can see on my Kali machine here, it's actually replied to me for the WPAD proxy. So that's how we know as attackers that we've got someone going through our proxy. Um, let's open up Wireshark just so we can get a look at what I'm doing, even though I'm doing it right in front of you. But yeah, let's 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 do this. Um, open up Wireshark, start filter for HTTP, apply. So we've got Wireshark open here. If I browse to, I don't know, what shall we browse to? MSN. So for some reason, Privoxy is very upset. Yeah, I've been upset, have you? I've, I think I've upset Privoxy. Not again. <laughs> so for some reason, it's saying no such domain. Let's try a different domain. So, Privoxy does need some tuning. As you can tell, I've probably just loaded this straight out of the box, which I have. So, um, you can just try again. This is one of the telltale things, though, about Privoxy, is if you're running it through it and you get an error, um, it just completely errors out. So, for some reason, this is saying no such domain. If we try and ping msn.com. So, we're getting an IP address, but no reply. Should we try going to a different domain and see if it's happier then? So it doesn't know how to get to Google either, apparently. That's an interesting one. Who does? <laughs> so this is a really interesting issue. So it's saying it can't get to Google or MSN. Should we try a plain... In fact, MSN is plain text. So, the domain cannot be resolved for whatever reason. So, let's just pause here and I'll get back to you when I've found out why the heck this is happening. <laughs> so, guys, I managed to uh, sort it out. Apparently, you don't need to use um, Privoxy or anything anymore, so just completely disregard when I said put shove it through Privoxy as well. You can just use, um, let me show you the command, just uh, for. Um, so you guys can replicate it if that's what you want to do. Just give responder a second to stop. Come on, responder. This is what happens when you multi-thread Python. It just gets very upset. Okay, so that's stopped now. This is the, all the all you need to do for this command is Python responder dot pi dash dash wpad dash capital I and then the interface. I'm going to run this. Um, I should still have Wireshark open here. We're going to grab this and just refresh. We're going to go to uh, msn.com. And right here, you can see get, uh, get msn.com. So everything's going through our machine. Um, when you're not trying to run it through another proxy, it's not that flaky, apparently. Um, that, as you can see there, it works straight away. So those are the, what, four types of man-in-the-middle attack we want yes. to show you? Oh, yeah. Four whole types of man-in-the-middle attack, so hopefully you guys can have some fun. Um, responsibly. Responsibly, yeah. Always hack responsibly. <laughs> Ethically. Ethically. Yeah, that one as well. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. That, that old chestnut. Yeah. So in terms <laughs> of, like, what I'd recommend to use, um, ARP spoof is pretty... Mm. It'll work almost everywhere. It can easily be mitigate, mitigated now. Uh, most like Cisco switches and stuff have actually like built-in features that block exactly this. So on like large corporate networks, it's probably not going to work. Um, ICMP redirects a lot faster than um, ARP spoofing, as we saw by Aaron's speed test. Um, a lot faster than ARP spoofing. 
um, but it's the same kind of deal on any kind of decently professional network. It'll be blocked by the switches. Um, what was the other one? DHCP. Uh, pretty much like the speed you'd be expecting, depending on the speed of your attacking device. If you have like a gigabit Ethernet port plugged in, it's going to be barely any speed difference. Um, but also can be easily blocked on the switch because they can lit on the switch they can basically say right only allow DHCP like address it like DHCP um, responses to come from the port that's connected to the router whereas WPAD um, as far as I I'm aware please feel free to correct me um, doesn't seem to be blocked anywhere because the whole idea is it's meant to be broadcasted to the whole network and um, like it's usually not the router that's providing the um, proxy. It's like a server, like running Forefront or something like that. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. Uh, it's been a long one. We are trying to um, like make longer episodes, so if you have liked it, feel free to leave a like or leave a comment. Any requests, as always, leave a like. And, and if you just like it, tell us if you just liked it, and uh, we'll yeah. Yeah, feel free. Like, if if you honestly have a problem with the videos, feel free to dislike, but please leave a comment because then we can actually like improve it or cater it more towards you. Um, if there's anything, like I said, request, leave a comment, and unless Aaron has anything else to say, I guess we'll be going. Yeah, I'm good. Cool. All right, we'll see you next time. Yeah, see you in a bit.